praise the Lord. I declare the Lord is good this morning. Can somebody say amen to that? Oh, praise the Lord. I tell you what, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And I almost feel like in the month of January, here's what you can write in that scripture in the state of Ohio. I said rejoice him in the sub-zero and rejoice him in the 50 degree weather. Rejoice him in the rain, rejoice him in the snow, rejoice in him in the ice. Can I have an amen on that today? Praise the Lord, but can we give the Lord one more hand clap of praise for the beautiful day he has blessed us with today. I am always thankful, especially in the winter months, to be able to come together in the house and work with worship with brothers and sisters of the faith. At this time, we've got some announcements to share with you, if you wouldn't mind to direct your attention to the screen. Thank you. Right. 
situation and he is working. In fact, we can have this hope that his deeds have made us glad. Can you do me a favor this morning? Can you just kind of dust yourself off and worship the Lord this morning? For he is the one who's in the middle of the situation and it is his works that have made us glad. I mean, can we give him a victorious praise this morning? Can we run out of the gate worshiping him today? Oh, I don't want to cause a pet rally, but when I think about the goodness of God, I can't help but to rejoice and open up my mouth and lift up my hands and clap my hands, maybe run a little, maybe dance a little. His works and his deeds have made me glad. Now, Pentecostal Spirit of Church, can you give him about 30 seconds of your most victorious, glorious, glad praise today?
You know, it's a wonderful thing to have the power of the Holy Ghost to move. And he, a fire that brings power and might. You know, a fire that heats up. Fire that is energy and powerful fire. You know, in a way, electricity is a fire that goes down a conduit line. And electricity is a fire. But when I think of fire, I think of the Old Testament. And I think of sacrifice. Now, in order to get the full benefit of the fire, something had to be burned. And when we give things over to God and the fire of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God as in Isaiah the prophet said, I saw the Lord and he's hiding it up, his train filled the temple. And he said up there there were angels flying and there on the altar, he said, he declared, he said, woe is me, I'm a man of love unclean lips and dwell among a people unclean lips. And so what did the angel do? The angel went and took a coal, a live coal off the fire and went and placed it upon his lips. And Isaiah was changed. Changed from being incapable or inept to one who said, Lord, send me. I'll go. I'll do what you want. The fire, the fire burns up impurities. Burns up. And I just ask you this morning, how many of you are willing to give something to God to burn up? Ready? Whether it be attitudes or certain actions and habits. Say, Lord, I just hand it over your fire. Burn it up. I don't know about you. I kind of like watching the fire. I like throwing things in the fire that burn. You know, you know, want to see what kind of flame it's going to produce. Sometimes you, with certain wires you throw in the fire, it, it, it will produce a certain color with the certain wire and the metal will make it as it melts. So I'm not telling you to go do that, but I like I like throwing stuff in the fire. See it all get consumed and burned up. And the, and the fire stays. That's it. The fire stays. What you have to offer to God won't quench the fire. It won't put the fire out. It won't control the fire of God. It will burn up. Everything that needs to get burned up. The Holy Ghost is good by what he does. He cures, purifies us, and he empowers us. Praise his holy name. Has the devil been beating you up? The devil been trying to do stuff against you? Then I say throw it in the fire. Throw it in the fire. God, take it, Lord. I don't want it anymore. I don't need it anymore. And, and yes, yes, by the way, God, just start consuming me. And let your glory begin to show forth through me, Lord. In Jesus' name. God is so good. He's so good at what he does with us and how he works his glory, his power. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. I can't be holy enough, but he can make me holy enough. I can't do good enough, but he can make me good enough. It, it, it's him, his fire burning. We need fresh fire. How many of you say, Pastor, I need a fresh fire in my life? How many are willing to surrender to the presence of the Lord? And say, Lord, here am I, Lord. Set me ablaze. Set me ablaze. Light the match and let me burn, Lord. You just take over right now, Lord. Just, I need a fresh fire, Lord, to come through. To come. Something more than just, a, just something displayed as we worship you, Lord, in and shout and praise, but something that is a fire that transforms us, changes us. Helps us, Lord, to find our why and begin to serve you with a fullness and a richness, oh God. Let the fire burn, God. Let the fire burn. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his holy name. How many years say, Pastor, I'm just going to let the Holy Ghost have this way with me in my life. I'm going to surrender everything to him. Oh Lord, Holy Spirit, take over, take charge. Take me, Lord. Take me, Lord. 
take charge, take charge. I want, I desire your fire to burn, to quench your fire to begin to consume and move. Oh Lord, and the power that comes by the Holy Ghost power, the fire that burns. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
I'm here to show you my way. I'm here to help you find the place and the journey and where you need to go. I'm here to direct you, to lead you. If you'll submit yourselves to me and hear my voice, I'm ready to lift you up. Everyone else has been trying to push you down. But I'm here to lift you up and to give you strength and know that my fire I have and my spirit is enough to purge and to cleanse and empower and to lead. Believe and know that I am your God and believe that in your heart, if you will listen, you will hear me. For I'm not far from you. I'm near to you and I care for you and know that I'm always present for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We just praise the Lord for a moment. Thank you for the message in tongues, interpretation in tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You find it in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. Chapter 12, chapter 14, and gifts of the Spirit manifested to the church. God wants to speak to each and every one of us. And it uses the power of the Holy Ghost. I tell you what, there's just a hovering presence in this, this room today. <clears throat> and I don't know what you are, I wouldn't want anything to hinder me from taking advantage of opportunity God's bringing this morning. And I want you just to open the heat on them. And right now, we're going to pray before I speak. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. In essence, in your own way, as I begin to pray, I want you to begin to pray and say, Lord, what do you want me to hear today? And this message today is, is a lot. I've never preached it before. And a lot's not me. It's a lot of notes. But it's a lot. Of, there's some content that I believe the Lord wants us to hear. So right now, will you pray right now with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your presence that you have moved so mightily in your house this morning. I thank you, Lord, for those who come and have entered in expecting, ready to worship you and glorify you, Lord. Now, Lord, speak to us, God. Speak to us. Let me hear, God, what I need to hear this morning, Father, in your word and through your word. And help me, Father, that I be the messenger that you called me to be, God. Oh, Lord, I just want to say what you want me to say and help me to say it. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is good. Yeah, it's good. This is God. It's good. Amen. It's, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's, you know it's God because it's emotions well up in exciting moments in time, but then it's like this deepness. You know, the penetrating presence of the Lord. And you, you just know it's God. And he's working on the inside of each and every one of us this morning. This year's vision is find your way. When I say vision, I mean a theme that's going to be a part of every ministry and everything we do at the church, whether it be with our children's ministries and team men, senior ministry, and, and other out, you know, connect team, uh, and just on and on. I could just go through a whole list here. And if I didn't say what you're a part of, please forgive me because I just don't want to get hung up. I'm going on and, and on. But everybody that does ministry in churches is going to be the thing. But more than that, everybody that calls this your church home, I challenge you to let this be your vision this year and theme, to find your why. To find your why. It, it's going to take some in, introspection and looking and examining. It may be, you know, considering, you know, different areas of your life because this is something needed in everything that touches our life. Find your why. A key verse of scripture is Acts 17 and 28, a portion of that verse. Paul writes and he says, or Paul's speaking. He says, for in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. Being sounds pretty complete, doesn't it? I mean, just in Him we live, we move, and we have our being. 
The date was February 11th, 1990. The place was Tokyo, Japan. The event was a boxing match for the World Heavyweight Championship with the undisputed, undefeated champion, Iron Man Mike Tyson. Fighting against Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson is 23 years old. Buster Douglas is 29. Mike Tyson, record, his record is 37 and 0. Fighting an underdog. The challenger, Buster Douglas, was fighting to make a name for himself and a little money. Here they are in the middle of a boxing match in 1990. Here in the eighth round, Mike Tyson, doing what he does so well, knocks Buster Douglas down. The referee begins to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And incredibly, Buster Douglas gets up off the floor, moving around days before the count of ten. He's back on his feet, and Mike Tyson makes his way toward him to finish him off. But as he walks toward Buster Douglas, Buster Douglas is saved by the bell. Somehow, though, something happened after the eighth round. When Buster Douglas came out for the ninth round, he was a different person. He had a new energy about him, and he fought with everything he had, and he made boxing history. When in round 10, he TKO and knocked out Mike Tyson. After the fight, a reporter asked Buster Douglas, what is it that made you do things differently and come out differently after round eight? That that made you box better. Buster Douglas said, he said, my mom was my biggest fan. She invested in me, she took me to the gym. She took sick before I could get here. And she died. And the last thing she told me was, win this fight for me. When Buster Douglas came out in round nine, he came out fighting with a Y. It was Y power instead of willpower. His willpower had waned, but Y power kicked in. Y power kicked in and it took him to another place. Y power is better than willpower. When we have a why, it energizes us, it motivates us, it makes us do what we need to do. It pushes us on, it's more than willpower. I don't know, maybe some of us, including myself, to lose weight, maybe I need more why power because I have a little problem with my willpower, you know? William Barclay, a Scottish minister and professor, he said there are two great days in a person's life. The day we're born and the day we discover why. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says in a New International Version, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In verse 12, I want to go on with verse 12 and 13. Oftentimes we go to verse 11, but 12 and 13 is, is tied into this. He said, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. 
God says here in this verse, I know the plans. He's not guessing. He knows the plans. He's actually saying, I'll tell you your plans if you will pray to me with all your heart. I will tell you your plans because he knows the plans. And you will find your why in your life within God's plan. If you leave God out, then you are left out. If you leave God out, then you'll be floating around trying to figure out why. Why, you know, not knowing the why. But if you and I include our creator, our God of the universe, the one who started everything and nothing exists but by him, if we start with him and we go to his plans, then our plans fit into his plans. And our why fits into his why. And what happens is that we will find the strength of all of heaven and the strength and fortitude of God and the powerful word of God to guide us along the way. In other words, you will find your why in your life within God's plan. In Psalm 57 and 2 in the Amplified Bible, it says, I will cry to God most high, who accomplishes all things on my behalf. For he completes my purpose in his plan. I just want to advise every student in this room. Put God first and go after his why for your why. And he'll make a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. There's a lot of experienced people in this room. Experienced people in this room who can tell you that by the, uh, by the way that they had lived at one time that they thought they knew why, but they didn't know God. And so they didn't know why. And so they messed up. They made poor decisions. They did the wrong thing. They did, it took, it's kind of like you went the long way around the field before you finally got to where you were going. But isn't it wonderful that our God is a God that knows the plans and knows, our, knows the plans and he's not guessing at it. He will guide you and direct you. All you and I have to do is to know him and to know him and to follow him. Sometimes to find your why there's a journey. There's a distance to cover from a question why. There is a distance to get to this point. It is a journey you make where the, a question suddenly transforms into a decree. A decree that declares order. And it is an order that you go by it's an order of authority that you quit waffling and wondering, but then suddenly your why changes into a motivation, into a decree in your life because you made it important to you. You found the why that God is giving you in your life. There's a distance to cover to transition from a question to a decree. A decree is an authoritative order. And you can decree in the name of the Lord if you know your why. You can decree and declare the say of the Lord, the say of God, His Word. This is the plan of God. And you can be so assured and with confidence, changing the question transitions into a decree. Because God is over you. You are in God and God is in you and he directs you and shows you. Sometimes to find your why, there is a journey. In that journey, your mind is made up. Willing to keep doing unpleasant things to get to the why, to the decree. I'm willing. My mind's made up. I'll go through the tough stuff to get to my decree, my authority, my power in God. I'm willing to go through the tough stuff and the stuff that ain't fun. You go from why do I to this is why I do. That's the decree. This is why I do. Life is not a journey trying to find pleasure. 
but trying to find meaning. Don't you want to find the meaning, the purpose, and not the pleasure? I like what Victor Franco, a French journalist, said. He said, he wrote, he said, a person cannot find a deep sense of meaning. When a person cannot find a, a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. You ever meet someone like that? Always seeking pleasure. Always look for fun, pleasure. Listen, God wants you to enjoy life, but some people are out of control. How many of you used to live that life? I'm living for the weekend. No, it's okay if it's going to be with your family, going to be in church, going to serve the Lord, enjoy time off the family. That's okay. But the weekend is Friday night. Friday night drinks and Friday night carousing and Friday night mess ups. Then I... And you need the Saturday and Sunday to be able to go back to work on Monday. Or sometimes you can't stop. Some people can't stop. They just live for the pleasure. They even, they even, they even pick who, they're going, who, who their God's going to be according to pleasure. Yeah. I don't like that God. He's not very fun. He's not enjoyable. How many here, I'm not going to ask you to show, to raise your hands, but ever met someone like that that always seeks pleasure, pleasure, but never finding meaning in their life? Oh, I will tell you, those folks seeking the pleasure usually end up being very, very disappointed and empty. They're always looking for people looking for the high, the next thrill. The next feel good. I know this ain't fun talk here. But God wants us to discover a why. He wants us to find a why. Why we're here, why we're living, what and he wants us to find him in the midst of our why. In other words, you won't ever if you don't find him, you won't find your why. You're still searching, still searching, still searching. When you find your why. It is your pleasure, which is your desire, Christ Jesus, that will give you the high that you're looking for. When you find the why, you find Jesus is the why. And suddenly you find the pleasure in him and what he can give us in our life. Isaiah 43 and 7 says, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. We've been designed to be a glory producer in this earth. Yeah, oh, we talk about light and light shining, but God has designed us to be a glory producer in this world. We are conduits of the glory of God. And God says that, he said in the verse, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. God wants us to influence this world and for the world to see the glory of God through us. We've been designed to be a glory producer in this earth. We need to pray. We need to pray this prayer. God, show me how to bring you glory at school. God, show me how I, bring you, I can bring you glory at work. Lord, show me how I can bring you glory all the places that I go and I go in this life. Lord, let your glory flow through me so that others will see Jesus and will desire to have what I have because they see the glory of him. Let me tell you that God's purpose, your why, is in every sphere of life. Every sphere, sphere of life. You'll have the glory of God. Now, I, I, I have some power on. Now, there I am. I, you didn't do anything. I leaned over. I should have done that. God's purpose, your why, is in every sphere of life. Sphere is the field of activity. Everything that is active in your life, God's purpose should be in it. All right. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much, Michael. 
God's purpose, your why, is in every sphere of life. And sphere means the field of activity. God wants everything we do to have his why mixed up in it. And that we do what we do with meaning and purpose. How many times you and I have had to go back to the cross? Have you ever done that before? Why? You know why you did. You needed to find your why. You need to find the meaning and purpose in God. You went back to him because somehow or another you and I got distracted. And somehow we couldn't follow out and follow through with the, the will of God in our life. So in every sphere of our life, God wants to be there and our why to be there. And then we live for him. Satan, let me tell you, Satan tries to snuff you out because of your potential and finding your why and that it will bring God's glory. Right. The devil wants to get you out of the way and me out of the way and all of us out of the way because of the, he knows the potential we have in God that the glory of the Lord would show forth. And uh, do I, am I bad again? <laughs> that, that was your wife, wasn't it? Yeah. Now I tell you, now another side of Pastor Ron. I feel like I'm going from one episode to another. Episode three, because I sound a little different now. Do I sound all right? Do I sound great? Great. Awesome. Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much. Let me tell you, the devil wants you to get out of the way. Satan knows more potential that you have in God in finding the why, your why, than what you and I realize. He knows if you and I get a hold of the truth, of the purpose of the purposes of God in our life and what God has for us. He knows what God can do in our life. He knows what the glory of God can move and happen in our life. So he's doing everything he can to get you out of the way. And for most folks, they don't need to die. They just need to get distracted. Out of, you know, becoming that, you know, I used to play chess. You never play chess and you get to the place where pawns, they face each other off and there's nothing to do and nowhere to go and they're just there. Suddenly they become like a picket fence or something. It's just, you, you can't do anything with them. They're just there in hope that maybe maybe some clue might come by and, and take them. But that's all they can do is sit there because they're stalled. They're stalled. And then, and then if you get a check, someone puts a check on you and your piece is about all gone, so all you're trying to do is keep moving the king. So after so they lose, you can have a stalemate. And some of us are that way in our life, we're stalemate. We've made a lot of moves, but haven't been the right moves. And, but God says, I want to make you more than a conqueror. I want you to win in this life and prosper in this life, be blessed by me, and I want you to be willing to hand it all over when I give it to you. So that you can fulfill my why and purpose. I'm willing to go through the tough stuff to get to the decree and the power and the authority we have in Jesus Christ. The devil may not be able to take your salvation. You've got to hand it over. But he'll be just as happy if he can render you powerless. Oh, I'm going to heaven. And that's about it. I'm going to make it to glory. That's about it. I'm going to make it to heaven. I'm going to see the pearly gates and walk on the streets of gold. I'm going to make it, but ain't going to have any other effect on anybody else. No, I'm telling you, God says I saved you with a purpose and a meaning. There's a why for your salvation, and it's more than just eternal life to make heaven your home. What are you doing with the folks around you? You know, there's a new thing kids talk about today. They, they say that they want to be an influencer on social media. I'm going to be an influencer. I'm going to be an influencer. I like what one, one uh, meme was in Facebook. He said that Jesus, all, all that Jesus had to do is influence 12 and they changed the world. But the thing is, I'm going to be an influencer. Oh, I don't know if I could ever imagine me getting a, a following on Facebook, you know, whatever. You guys this morning are a captivated audience. You're sitting in the chair and I'm talking to you. And you just got to love me. You just got to love me. Glory to God. You got Jesus in your heart because you got, you have, have you ever had someone tell you, well, I love you. Jesus won't, makes me love you. I have to love you. Doesn't that feel so meaningful? 
I have to love you. Jesus came by and twisted my arm. And I got to love you. It's so meaningful. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, thank you. Thank you. I, I say thank you, Jesus, because Jesus loves me so much. But the thing is, is that you want to be an influencer. How many of you want to be an influencer? I'm not talking about success in life. I'm talking about having meaning in your life and walking in the why of God and God using you that you not only make it to heaven, but you've got a whole group of people going to heaven because you are an influencer. And just because you've got kids by blood and grandkids by blood doesn't make you an influencer that they're going to make it into heaven. You need to be an influencer with the why and purposes of God that you win them to Christ, that we don't want anybody to leave this world without the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you feel that way? I know you feel it. Don't you think it's time we just get step into the meaning of God and the why of God and, and what God has for us and the why that he has for us to live, that we find our why and God starts using us in our salvation and during our salvation to influence other people. Right now, the Holy Ghost is giving you faces in your mind to think about someone right now. I ain't doing that. That's the Lord. I'm not doing that. The Holy Spirit's doing that with you because He's wanting to confirm that you've got a why. There's a why. There's a why. And your why isn't to live a life of total, constant defeat all the time in your spiritual life. Your, your why is to fulfill the purposes of God in your life. And I, last I checked, God was never defeated, never will be defeated. He is always victorious. He is always victorious. God's people are an answer to a problem. You're the solution to a problem and God wants to use you. If we could just imagine and realize that we are pieces of his plan and puzzle. Remember he said, I know the plan and you're a part of that plan. And some other people, he's got you on assignment. He has all of us on assignment. And he saved us so that we can reach other people and people that we're going to come in contact with and people that are, are already a part of our life. And so therefore, you know, you're the solution to the problem. America, if I can talk to the whole country, and those guys and ladies that talk like they're running this country, can I say this to them and to everybody, and I wish the president was in the room, God's people are the solution for America. And it's not because of our beaming personality and talents and abilities. No, it's because of him and we have the word and the word has led us and the word will lead this country and the word will never tell a lie and the word will always be the way. Jesus will always be the way. So you are a solution to a problem that God is wanting to solve. Meaning the purpose, you're not an accident. God's got a plan. He's working that plan. And I tell you what, though I may talk like and preach like I'm really getting on you what it is. This is really big stuff here. Because if we if we realize it and we find meaning and purpose, we realize that we're not going to play games anymore. We're not going to sidebar Jesus when we want to go do something else besides the Lord. When we when when we want to do things that please ourselves rather than please God, that we just okay, Jesus, you just sit over here for a while, and I'll come get you later. But if we realize the potential, the promise, what God can do through us in the name of Jesus Christ and through the name of Jesus Christ, then I think we would realize, man, I'm in business. I want to live like I I mean business with God. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father but by me. And so it's by him and through him we want to reach other people. We want, we're the solution to a problem. And becoming that solution is our, our why, our purpose. In 2 Timothy 1 and 9, God, I put in God here because it just starts with who, but God who has saved us and called us with a 
holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which he's given to us in Christ Jesus before time. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. Our works are dark. Our works are unfruitful. Our works are unholy. Our works is unrighteousness. Our works aren't worth a dime. But when you and I know, when you know your why, you walk in liberty and freedom. You see, the thing is, is the fact that we're saved and we're called, uh, not according to our works, but according to his works. According to what he has done, he has called us to reach the world and to live in the why and know the why and find our why in him. Because when you find your why, you walk in liberty. When you find your why, you have the fruit of the Spirit demonstrated in your life. When you find your why, Jesus is, is ready to speak through you and to other people and to reach other people for the kingdom. When you, when you know your why, you, you and I walk in liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And where there's a knowing the why, there is the Holy Spirit in the spiritual walk. Walking and doing everything with his power and persuasion. Persuasion means convinced. We're, we are persuaded. We know. We are confident. We are convinced with his, God's power. We're walking in liberty with his power and with his persuasion in our life. We're persuaded. We know. We don't question. We don't wonder. We know him. We know that he's given us a why. You're declaring things that when you're walking and doing everything in the power and being convinced, you will be declaring things like, if God is for me, who can be against me? Or words like, if I abide in him and his word abides in me, I can ask what I will and it shall be done unto me. Or words like, who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Remember what I said last week? Don't let circumstances and surroundings control your why. It's not going to control your why. Why? Because yet in all these things, I am more than covered through him who loved me. I changed the pronouns in there to make it singular so that you and I can make it our statement personally, the word of God. We are, you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. And no matter what may come your way, what circumstance or situation, it cannot and shall not control your why. You know what I say? Go, Joe. Joe. Yeah, Joe. Go, Joe. Lost everything in their game. A few short minutes, he lost everything, including his health. And circumstances didn't change his life. He sat there, worshiped the Lord, and said, The Lord give it, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I'm telling you, I think I, I don't think it was like he just methodically just said that. No, I believe he was worshiping God and said, and blessed be the name of the Lord. Because he knew his why. He knew his why. Some people have asked me, believe it or not, I don't know if you've ever known me. You, some of you've known me for a while, but you've never known me before. You know. Pre-pastor, pre-preacher. Nobody here knows except I don't. I don't think my wife even knew me before I was a preacher. I'm calling. Oh, that's right. You did know me. Now she was there when I got called. Okay. No, we weren't dating. I didn't go to elementary school with you. No, no, no. I didn't. I'm much, much, much older than her, and so I was, and so. But when I was young, I stuttered when I was a little boy. Uh, first three grades, first through the third, I stuttered real bad. I was insecure. I was in a house where there was alcoholism and problems, major problems, and I was insecure. And honestly, I just, you know, this, I was happy, didn't want, people scared me to death. I was afraid and nervous. But now, you know, look at me now. I'm screaming action. I'm sweating. <laughs> 
waiting on, carrying on, you know, you using up three microphones. And that's what you go and tell your family and say, well, how was Sunday service? Man, the pastor used up three microphones in that service. Used them up. That one went dead, he grabbed another. He took off for a while, then that one went dead, and he went another. They'll, they'll think you've been in church all day. Though some of you might feel that way right now. But I've had people tell me, after God called me and preached for so many years or whatever, that you know, if you've known me in my past, I'm, I'm really rather introverted. I'm not one to really want to get around people a lot. It just wasn't me, you know. But I, and then I've had people ask me, do you ever, don't you get nervous when you get up in front of people and you preach? I've, I've stood in front of thousands of people one time and shared and, and all that. I said, aren't you a, afraid to speak to crowds and nervous to speak to crowds? And I'm going to give you my answer. My answer is this. That's part of my why. I was made for this. I was made for this. And so therefore, I'm not of my own, and I'm not of me, but it's his why. And then that just happened to be when I was a young man, and God called me, good boy, to preach. I, I just realized, I said, God, I want your why so much that my why don't matter anymore. Let my why be your why. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so therefore, I got up, and I started preaching, and started preaching. The more I preached, I realized, God, you know, I, I can't believe this, this, this kind of boldness, this kind of loudness, this kind of, this kind of energy, this kind of preaching, this stuff coming out of me. I can't believe it's coming out of me. But God says, it's not coming out of you, it's coming out of me. It's coming out of me flowing through you because you decided to make your why my why and I can use you. You know what I'm talking about. You went up and prayed for people that you didn't even know their name or know them. And you went up to there because the Holy Spirit led you to them and you prayed for them. And they confirmed and said, yes, you know, I can't believe you come up and you prayed for me. I can't believe that you did that. I needed God to do this. God to send me somebody. And here you are. You decided to let your wife be his wife. And for you to go and do audacious things such as that. I guess we can say that if we're walking and we find a why, we'll be audacious. Not out of order, but bold with the authority of a decree from the Lord Jesus Christ. My power, why power is better than willpower. What a sad travesty to get saved and then not know why. And it's that travesty. God saved you. There's a why. It's more than saving you from the flames of hell. However, that's a wonderful motivation to escape the flames of hell. But there's a why. And we need to ask and say, Lord, show me. I want to find your why. Show me more. He'll tell you. I, I'm not a daring person. And I'm not to say this. I never really double dog dared anybody. But I'm telling you today. I double dog dare you. To give God the opportunity. To show his plans. For you. And you may find it may be even different than what you thought you wanted. The Bible says that God will meet the desires of your heart. No, you know, he will do that. When your desires line up with his desire, then he will give it to you. He answers prayers, but he said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask what you will and shall be done unto you. But see, it's that in his life. God will bless you at your workplace. God will prosper you if the why is to glorify him. He will bless you. He will bless you. 
you'll have just as sure favor upon you as Joseph had it. And even more so because you have Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And his favor is upon you. Would you stand with me? Father, we want to find our why. Father, we want to walk in your will and your plans. You said you know the plans. And then you said you would, in the verse of Jeremiah 12 and 13, saying that we will ask you with all our heart that you would give us and show us and would hear us. Reveal to us your plans. We pray with all our heart. In other words, Lord, if we're serious with you. I don't want anybody in this house to be scared, Father. I just want people in the house to see what you see in them. And what you have planned for them. That it is beyond their imagination. <laughs> Help us, Lord, to find the why. Find the why in being married. Find the why in raising our family and our children. Find the why in working our jobs. Find the why in being a neighbor. Find the why when we're out in public. Find the why in everything, everything, all activity, the sphere. Give you a 